her local network to figure out what kind of router she's running. This is very simple. Here's one example. There's a million ways to do it. Basically, I have iframes on a bunch of different URLs that are known router locations on your local network. I can't access that. But because her browser is on my site, it's now her network that's accessing it. So she's accessing 192.168 addresses. If any of those addresses work, an onload occurs which says, oh, I've detected a Belkin router, or oh, I've detected a Verizon Fios router. And now we know what kind of router she's on. After that, we could log in with default credentials. No one changes their credentials on the router. They're like, who's going to connect? A, you need to have a really strong, you know, let's assume you're running WPA, and the only way to connect is either knowing the WPA password or by getting physical access. So who's going to be able to access those internal uh, IP addresses? Well, I can. So can you. So make sure you change your credentials when you have a router at home that has an HTTP-based uh, authentication system. This is not necessary for, all, for this attack in many cases, but here's a way to log in to, uh, I believe this is a Belkin router. There's actually a, a nice list of XSS, CSRF, ad, uh, default passwords for every major router that you can find online. So Anna visits the site. We figure out the router type. We log in if we have to, which in many cases we don't, and then we XSS the router, and we load remote J JavaScript. All right, so what's the JavaScript do? The JavaScript then uses Ajax and connects to another page on the router and acquires the MAC address of the router. All right, well, who cares? It's a MAC address. Like, what's the big deal? So briefly, you know, what is a MAC address? It's basically every network device on your uh, network has a MAC address, kind of like an IP address. Uh, it's, hard, it's in hardware. It can't change unless you're spoofing it. And it's how everything communicates with each other on your LAN. So why the MAC address? Why do we want to acquire it? What's so interesting about it? I'll take you through the steps. Just Bing it. Open your browser. Type www.bing.com in the URL bar. When, it comes, when the search box comes up, type in Google. <laughs> And hit enter. I'll wait. So why Google? Oh yeah, because they know everything. Really. So some of you may be familiar with this. Um, if you remember Aaron Andrews, the peephole video that came out, Google. Google Street View. Uh, actually, peephole.google.com, I think. So this is a Street View car. Many, some of you may have seen it. Some of you, well, lots of you probably know what it is. It's the car. It's the one guy who drives around America taking pictures. Drives down every single street. This is the worst job. Now, we understand Street View is really cool. You can go, you can go onto Google Maps, and you can see all the, uh, all the different streets, the people flashing the cameras, marriage proposals, or all sorts of awesome stuff. What you may have not known is that they're collecting data. Now, recently, there was this big, hic uh, big thing about Google collecting unencrypted Wi-Fi data. Well, this has nothing to do with that. Assume they don't have any of that Wi-Fi data, which they've already deleted in a lot of places. They're still collecting other, <laughs> right. They're still collecting other Wi-Fi data. So what are they collecting? Well, as they're driving around, not only are they taking pictures, not only are they mapping GPS coordinates, but they're also looking at just Wi-Fi packets in general, not the data portion. They're looking at the headers. Now, what's interesting about the headers? It contains MAC addresses. The hardware MAC address of your router, the same device that we acquired, the MAC address that we acquired just with our triple XSS. <laughs> All right, so why is that interesting? Well, Wi-Fi, you can detect strength. As they're driving down, they're actually detecting my network at home, mojitos, mo problems, if you ever see it. <laughs> They're driving down the street and they say, oh, I detect, you know, I, de I detect a network. It's about 10 out of 100 strength-wise. It must be close. Driving a little further, taking their pictures. Like, oh, it's stronger now. It's 50 out of 100. Gets to its maximum, say, 85 out of 100. And then it starts to basically go down. Well, they've just triangulated my position. They're actually, not only are they going on that street, but they're going on every other street around it. 
and now they're getting even more accurate data. They may see it actually goes up to strength 95 on the street parallel to mine. Now they know that I'm actually closer to that street than I am the other one that was at 85 strength. They are literally triangulating your network. It doesn't matter if you're encrypted. It doesn't matter if you're using WEP, WPA, WPA2. The, net, the packets are flying and the MAC address is in there, unencrypted. So, how do we use this to our advantage? Well, Firefox has this cool feature that very few people know about called location services. It's really cool. Um, what happens is JavaScript will execute. You can go to, my, go to a website and JavaScript will execute and it will say, Firefox understands this and says, oh, I better collect my, the MAC address of my gateway and send it to Google and find out where I am. Well, they were smart. They said, you know what, we probably shouldn't do that by default, even though we'd like to. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the user. We're going to have a, a little box come up that says, do you want to share your location with this website? They want to do it. You can't take it over with click jacking. Uh, you can't, uh, I haven't really found any way to basically hack it in Firefox. Other browsers don't have support for it yet. I believe a developer build of Chrome does. So how is this interesting? You know, we can't really access it. They visit our malicious website, but we don't want them to see that, and they're not going to click it. Well, Firefox is making an HTTPS connection to Google and asking them for this information. Well, why don't we make that connection? I can write a program on the back end, so when you visit my website, I use triple XSS to acquire your MAC address, and then I send it back to my little program running in the background that's not running on your browser anymore, I then connect to Google, I send your MAC address and this post request, and it sends back your location, your coordinates. Jack Bauer level triangulation. <laughs> now, now, just to understand how accurate is this, this is an actual router I have exploited, and I knew the address beforehand, because Anna was there. So. I went over there and I did a Google Maps request. And I said, you know, take these coordinates and drive me to the location, the address. Let's see how far it, how far it was. Driving directions, 30 feet. I looked over the router, it was 30 feet away. Seriously, that's what it said, 30 feet. That's how accurate the coordinates are. I mean, it's, it's, on, my, it's on that router that I was exploiting. I think Zuckerberg said it best. Privacy is dead. Thank you.